Previously, on JW Reality TV. Phillips Detective Agency? My name is Stephen Morris, and I want you to follow my wife. You see, I recently became a Jehovah's Witness, and I can't divorce her and remarry unless she commits adultery. I'm Gayla. And I'm Sappho. I'm Gloria Morris, 36 years old. The wife of Stephen and the mother of Galeb and Sappho. My husband and I are separated, and I have custody during the week, and I bring them over to his house on the weekends. I want to have a Bible study with the kids. Like we used to, before you gave up on it. Make it a real Bible study, from the Bible. Now watch our publications. Who wants to read verse 1 of chapter 1? But my kids? Let me tell you, precocious isn't the word, they're little geniuses. Someday they'll be working for NASA, or something like that. Well, unless they get sucked into their dad's religion, the witnesses don't believe in higher education or pursuing a career. I'm going to do whatever I can to protect them from that. Didn't the Bible writers know about photosynthesis? When science is at odds with the Bible, we have to go by the Bible, because it's God's word. Why do you call God a he? Is there gender in heaven? The Bible was written by men, I'll bet. And what does it mean for a spirit being to be male? Does he have a penis? Let's get real. Thanks, Dad, for taking us out to eat. After those interminable meetings. You're welcome. But the meetings are fascinating and upbuilding. We got bored, waiting for you for so long, in the empty hall. What were you doing all that time, with the elders in the back room? Well, that's private. That's why judicial meetings are held in the back room. Sit down, Brother Morris. Well, brothers, we're here to discuss a disturbing matter. Yes, indeed, scandalous, I'd say. What's it all about, brothers? Did I do something wrong? We, and the entire congregation, have noticed you're sitting next to Sister Abrams in the hall. You're a married man. What do you have to say for yourself? Oh, it's okay, brothers. My wife has committed adultery, so I'm divorcing her. Scripturally, I consider myself divorced already. It's just the secular legalities of it that have to be worked out, and that takes time, as you know. But in Jehovah's eyes I'm free to remarry. How do you know your wife has committed adultery? Did you catch her in the act? We need details. The more details the better. I hired a private investigator to follow her. I have his report if you'd like to read it. He witnessed her staying overnight at a man's house. No details of the sex. Sorry, no. It was too much money to get the 24-hour surveillance package with photographic coverage. But the detective followed her to the man's house. Her car was still in the man's driveway when the detective left at 5 o'clock that evening and it was still there when he returned in the morning. Plus, he tracked her cell phone and saw that it hadn't moved from the man's residence all night. It's more than enough to establish her guilt. Yes, Brother Morris, you have earned a scriptural divorce. But you still shouldn't sit next to Sister Abrams until your divorce is legally finalized. Oh, I think we can waive that stipulation. Okay, as long as Brother Morris is sitting with the entire Abrams family, not just the daughter. Okay, kids, let's start our family Bible study. I've got answers to all of your questions from yesterday. Good. Did you look them all up in Watchtower Publications? Well, that and JW.org. The mom said. She said not to use Watchtower Publications during our Bible study. That doesn't mean I can't use them to prepare for it. Besides, as the man, I'm in charge, not mom. I hate it when he pulls the, I'm the man, I'm in charge, routine. 
he's just skirting around the rule. If we do that, he lowers the hammer, but as the dad, he gets away with it. If that macho crap is part of his religion, it makes me hate it even more. I'll be an obedient daughter, but I'm not going to be submissive to someone just because they're a man. Anyway, Galib, you asked how we get 7,000 years for the length of each day of creation. I found the answer. If you count up all the ages of the men in the Bible when they had children, you'll see that Adam was created about 6,000 years ago, and we're still in the seventh day of creation, where it says God is resting from all his created works. And then we still have the thousand years of Christ's reign to get through, so that makes the seventh day a total of 7,000 years. The other days must have been equally long. Oh. Okay. How do we know that we're still in the seventh day? Because, for all of the other days of creation, it says they had a morning and an evening, an nth day, but not the seventh. For the seventh day it says in chapter 2, verse 3, that God made the seventh day sacred, a Sabbath day, on which God has been resting. Which is an ongoing thing. My Bible doesn't say that. It says, he rested on the seventh day, past tense. Yeah, that's what mine says too. Well, the New World Translation is what I'm quoting. Remember I told you it's the most accurate. Yeah, but that's a Watchtower publication, and if it's the only one that says that, you can't use it. Why can't he use it? Because he said you can learn the truth from any Bible. Remember? Oh, yeah. Also, Mom said, no Watchtower publications. Remember? Oh, yeah. Dad, are there other translations that say, resting, instead of, rested? Well, not that I know of. Hey, mine has a cross-reference to John 5:17. Maybe that'll help. It says, Jesus said to them, My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. Oh. So. If God is working, he's not resting anymore, and the seventh day must be over. And if the seventh day is over, you've lost your reason for thinking that it's 7,000 years long. Well, he's resting from his creative work, but doing other work, I guess. But here's another cross-reference, to Psalm 104 verse 30, which reads, When you send your spirit, they are created. So, according to the Bible, he's still creating. Every person born is a new creation. Interesting. You can't just say, interesting, and go on believing that we're still in the seventh day. Don't you see how this destroys that belief? Well, if I had my Watchtower publications, I'm sure we could find an answer. So then we can't learn the truth from any Bible, like you said. We can only arrive at Watchtower conclusions from reading Watchtower publications. But, Dad, here's what I want to know. The Bible says there was a morning and an evening to each of the six days. How can a 7,000 year period have a morning and an evening? It must be symbolic. Symbolic of what? I don't know. Well, verse 5 of the first chapter says, God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. That doesn't sound symbolic to me. But you want us to believe that. After having just defined a day as a light, the very first use, the word is put to, doesn't mean light at all, but rather a symbolic period, totaling 7,000 years. Maybe the universe was light for half the time, morning, and dark for half the time, evening, 3,500 years each. That's just stupid. And anyway we know, from the age of the rocks and stuff, that the earth has been around a whole lot longer than 7 days of 7,000 years each. 7 times 7,000 is 49,000 years. That's a long time. Yeah, but it's more like 4 and a half billion years that the Earth's been around. I have the answer for that too, young lady. The Earth was created back in verse 1, in the beginning. Before the first day of creation. So it could have been billions of years ago. 
Yesterday, in order to explain how the A-heavens were created on the second day, you told us that the days of creation all happened in the beginning. But now, in order to explain the age of the earth, you're saying that the days were after and separate from the beginning. So, which is it? Um. Ah. Uh. And why does verse 4 of chapter 2 refer to the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens? Sounds like he made it during one of the days, not before. And why does my Bible have a cross-reference here to Exodus 20 verse 11, which says, For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth. Well, heaven and earth must be referring to his making the dry land and the sky. But the earth itself was there before the first day. That just doesn't make sense. If the stars and the earth were already there before the first day, then the sky was already there too. The sky is just space surrounding the earth. It doesn't require a later special creation in and of itself. As soon as there was an earth there was a sky, it couldn't have waited to be created on the second day. Well, I've explained it as best I can without the publications. Any questions? Yeah. Do you really think that the people who wrote this, and the people who have read it prior to Watchtower publications, really believed these days were 7,000 years long? Don't you really think they believed it meant 24-hour days? I don't know what they believed, but I know the truth as revealed to us in these last days by the faithful and discreet slave. Any other questions? Yeah, I was reading chapter 2 last night, and I wondered about something. Remember yesterday we read the order of creation was, plants, on the third day, animals, on the fifth, and then man and woman, on the sixth? So how come in chapter 2 the order is, man, plants, animals, and then woman? Of course woman would be the last thing anyone thought of. So, was man created, before, the plants and animals, or, after, them? I don't know, Galib. That's a good question that I don't have an answer to right now. Well, the Bible has an answer. Actually, it has two answers, and they contradict each other. You can believe one or the other of them, but not both. I believe them both. Impossible. You can't believe that man was created before, plants and animals, and that he was created after the plants and animals. When you can't understand something, that's when faith comes into play. Not understanding is different than pretending to believe the inherently impossible. And let me ask you this, was woman created at the same time, like we read yesterday, male and female he created them, in, God's likeness, or as an afterthought from a rib, after Adam tried out all the animals first? Oh, I looked into that likeness thing last night, and I can answer that for you now. It doesn't mean that we physically look like God, but rather that we are moral agents like God. What does moral agents mean? Basically, moral means that we know right from wrong. And agents mean that we can act on that knowledge. Any other questions? As if you've answered the questions I've already asked. Hey guys, did you have a nice time with your father? Sure. Not really. Just Bible study and homework. Well, come on, let's go get some pizza and watch Harry Potter. Yay! I mentioned that on purpose, Jehovah's Witnesses aren't allowed to watch Harry Potter because of the magic. They hate magic. One of Galeb's friends gave him an action figure back when we were all studying. It was of a wizard called Sparlock. We made him throw it away. They say that Jehovah hates magic, I guess they forgot about his competing with the Egyptian magicians with Moses as his frontman in Exodus. I found out something disturbing today, at the Kingdom Hall. I don't know if I should tell anyone. I couldn't tell my dad, because he'd just tow the party line and say we can't air any information that would bring reproach to Jehovah's organization. It sounds like you need to get it off your chest. April, a girl my age, 
told me that Elder Curtis touched her down there. More than once. I told her to report him to Elder Mortimer, he seems the kindest of the lot. But she said she already did, they had a judicial meeting on it, and decided not to report it to the authorities because there weren't two witnesses to the molestation. They told April to keep quiet about it and not to make up stories that would hurt one of Jehovah's servants. It makes me so mad. Next time, on JW Reality TV. This is Helen Jean Abrams. My fiancé. What? Aren't you still married to Gloria? A technicality. I filed for divorce. So, she committed adultery, then? Yes. Kids, today we come to the most important part of Genesis, the story of Adam and Eve. Wait a minute, Dad. A talking serpent? Well, we know it was Satan, acting like a ventriloquist, to make it appear that the serpent was speaking. How do you know that? Where does it say that in Genesis? Actually, surprisingly, Satan isn't mentioned by name in Genesis, or in any of the first five books. But we're supposed to be just going by what the Bible actually says, not surmising all these conjectures, and adding imaginary scenes to try to make it work out the way we think it should be. You children need to be more submissive. You know what the Bible says they used to do to sassy children? They'd stone them to death. Submissive? No, that's your role if you want to be a JW wife, not our role. Obeying is different from kowtowing or swallowing make-believe stories, as if they were true, without thinking for ourselves, to see if they even make sense. You know, you say that evil exists because God didn't want to curtail our free will. Yet, that's exactly what the Watchtower wants to do, have us give up our free will and follow blindly whatever the governing body and the elders dictate. I need you to leave so we can study the Watchtower for tomorrow's meeting at the Kingdom Hall. She's our mom and she can come and see us whenever she likes. She has more right to be here than Helen, a girl who's only five years older than me. And, furthermore, I'm not going to the meeting tomorrow. In fact, I'm not setting foot in that Kingdom Hall ever again. They're talking bad about my mom.